everyone, today I am here with Ford and we are going to go over the basic grooming skills that you'll be able to do at home. Um, if you have a dog, do you groom him at home? Do you take him to a grooming facility? Well, if you are unsure how to do certain things, we are going to show you today. Ford has already been bathed. Um, Ford has issues with skin allergies, so I give him a aloe bath. Um, there are certain types of baths you can give dogs per their skin issues, shedding, certain things. If you're unsure, you can ask the cashier or person in that department, or you can even call a grooming facility and find out. So once you know that your dog is dried, fully completely dried, don't you want to brush them when they're wet or anything. So you will get your brush. Depending on the type of breed you have in their coats, it'll all determine their brushes. Ford's here, he is a Labradoodle, so we are going to use a slicker brush. So when you are brushing these dogs, which a lot of people have golden doodles, so their coats are horrible. If you do not brush correctly. A lot of people just think that you just go over the coat like this. Long hair, short hair, you need to watch because you're just brushing the top of the coat. What you want to do is you want to go, get up for you. You want to lift up the hair in sections and you want to brush down. If you have any matting or anything of that sort, you want to be careful with brushing that because that can pull their skin and it hurts and sometimes they'll bite. So you just need to be cautious when you're brushing your dog. You don't want to push too hard because these bristles can burn your dog's skin, cause issues with that. So you do not want that. Um, if you have a short hair dog, such as a boxer or terrier, you want to use a Furminator. Um, you can buy those at your local pet stores or Walmart or Menards. And you want to do the same thing, which is not going to work correctly on his coat. But it'll help with all that shedding that you have at home that no one likes on their clothes or when you try to look nice and the stuff sticking to you like glue. It's not very much fun. So once you have your dog properly brushed, you want to make sure too that their nails are in good shape. So having a dog having long nails can mess with their bone structure, can mess with their joints. Their nails can actually grow inside into their pads, which is not as good. So on their nails, Ford doesn't like it very well, so bear with us. On nails you can see, you can normally see the quicks. So you just want to take your clipper, make sure you don't get the click, and just snip. Even though it's scary, and if you happen to make your dog bleed at home, just put a little flour on it, apply pressure, and it'll go away. Ford has already had all his other nails trimmed the other day. So just a little short demonstration. If they have black nails and you are nervous, just kind of snip the tips of them, or you can even just call your local grooming facility and they'll come in and do it for you. So, next step. You want to make sure your dog's ears are cleaned. Having dirty ears can cause infections and bacteria build up, and that's where you get smell and yeast and goopiness and vet bills. <clears throat> so, to show you how to properly clean their ears. First, here's Ford's ears. Ford has hair. You wanna make sure you remove that hair. All you do is just simply put your fingers in there and pull. Does it hurt them? It can. They don't like it, but all that buildup is not good either. See, and Ford has dirty ears. So what you'll do is you'll take your ear cleaner. You can get it at your local business, a place of your preference. Oops. Put on your little cotton ball here. Some dogs fight you. Your dog at home may fight you. It just all depends on the dog. If they've never had it done, they may be scared. You just have to work with them and show them. So all you'll do is just slowly put it in there and you'll have to kind of dig deep down in there to get that in there clean. And voila. And just keep going through the ear. Make sure sometimes if you can't, if it's real goopy, you'll have to use a Q-tip and clean that all that out. And then you never want to leave the ear really wet and moist. That is a growing ground for bacteria. So kind of defeats the purpose of cleaning an ear. So then you just want to make sure that you dry it out. So we'll clean all that out. All right. So after you've ensured your dog is brushed, his ears are clean. Um, next thing you know, sometimes you'll get them groomed, shaving, buzzing, but we're not going to do that because that's hard to do at home. 
um, your dogs will know you and trust you. So if they hate being brushed, God, Lord, it has taken me a long time to get him used to this. You just have to work with them. Go slow. You know, be cautious with them. Develop a lot of patience. Um, and if you notice lumps and bumps on your dogs, a way to do that is, you know, once in a while, feel your dog. Lift his legs. Look underneath. Sometimes they'll get the skin tags right in here. Or on their face, they'll get little warts. Sometimes they get even zits. Um, things like that when you are brushing your dogs or, you know, playing with them, you want to be cautious with that. Don't brush them too hard. If you pick and poke at them, that's where you can get infections. So with those, you want to be cautious. Um, if you're unsure, you can go to the vet or sometimes your groomer will let you know. Um, try not to Google too much because Google is misleading. So overall, if you understand the correct brushing with your dogs, what brushes to use, um, you can call, ask the place to find out. Um, ear cleaners, always just check your dog's ears as well. If their dogs have loose ears like here, they're gonna be prone to get dirty a lot more than dogs with higher ears. So, overall, just make sure you're brushing your dog at home, checking his toenails, cleaning his ears, and checking for any lumps or skin tags that you're unsure of. So, thank you, and remember, a happy dog is a happy home.